I think that should give me all I need. And I mean it this time. <laughs> I won't keep bothering you. No, you're not bothering me. If I'm being honest, I've really enjoyed all of this. My two best friends are both guys, so it's nice to get some girl time in. I can imagine. I know you said you moved here not too long ago, but it's just the three of you? No other friends? Well, sure. There are a few others. Jen, from work, for one. She's cool. We'll have lunch together sometimes. Then some people from the theater. But we don't really hang out on our own time. The boys keep me busy enough on their own. <laughs> Speaking of which, sorry, I told Henry we were meeting up today. He must have forgotten. How's he doing? Your other friend, too. Oh, what's his name? Victor. Victor, of course. They're doing well. I wouldn't say well. Things are still rocky. We're civil towards each other, but... I understand. One wrong move can cause all sorts of tension, no matter how long someone's been friends. Whatever happened to cause all that anyway, I don't think you ever said. It was before I moved here. I don't have a lot of details, and I never asked. Figure, if they want to tell me, they will. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought Victor's name sounded familiar, so I did a bit of research. He's had a rough few years, it seems. Yeah, no doubt about that. He's handling it pretty well, though. It must have been hard to get to that point. I know what it's like. What what's like? Losing someone you love. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean- No, no. Don't be sorry. It was a long time ago. Can I ask? Of course. We were young. I was living with my father, still trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, looking for any career that would satisfy us both. I always wanted to travel. He was overprotective, liked having me close by. That was what got me interested in pen pals, I think. The sense of wanderlust that I feared would never be sated. If I couldn't see the world, I would have others send the world to my doorstep. I'd been talking with a girl from Switzerland for quite some time by this point, and we considered ourselves to be close friends. So, when I got a letter telling me she was coming to visit for a month, you can imagine how excited I was. I'd always been somewhat isolated growing up, so company was rare. Everything changed about two weeks before she was due to arrive. There had been a car crash the night before. The woman driving had been badly injured and would have to go to Boston for medical care. The passenger was a student at Marksbury State, studying abroad, who had been staying with her for winter break. The problem was that she had some health conditions which required her to be home with someone at all times. Just as a precaution, you understand. So, naturally... Staying in the woman's house by herself was out of the question. She couldn't fly back home. She had no one else to stay with, so my father decided to let her come with us. All at once, I was going from near total isolation to having two girls my age to talk to. I'll admit, I was anxious. I knew that I was delayed socially due to my upbringing. And if I'm honest... I had no idea what I was supposed to do. But then I saw her. And Christine, my dear, she was beautiful. A head shorter than me. Pale, long, blonde hair that never seemed to need more than a moment's effort to look absolutely pristine. She was soft, quiet, unless she began to trust you polite to a fault, with an air of mystery about her that was nothing short of enthralling. I wouldn't say that I fell in love immediately, but there was certainly something there. 
She was constantly on my mind and played a starring role in my dreams more often than I'd like to admit. I showed her around, and that was the most freedom I'd ever felt. My father seemed to trust her, as did I. And before I knew it, she and I began experimenting with different levels of intimacy. She and I took some time to get to know one another. And when my other friend arrived, it was like the three of us had known one another our entire lives. Their sleep schedules were near opposite, so more than once I nearly ran myself to the point of exhaustion, trying to get as much time with each as I could. At first, we thought that might have been the reason why I ran into some health problems while they were there. But before long, it was clear that wasn't the case. It was a steady decline. No one seemed to know what was causing it. But I wasn't the only person in town showing symptoms. I don't remember the exact number of cases, but it was starting to be a local mystery. <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. One day, after yet another pointless doctor visit, my father and I returned to find an empty house. My pen pal had left a note informing us that she was returning to Switzerland a week early, without having said goodbye. And the woman, I suddenly realized that I loved, gone without a trace. They would find her body three days later in the woods by a river in Marksbury, stabbed three times in the chest and beheaded. Obviously homicide, though no suspect was ever identified. I've tried dating since then, tried to move on, but... Nothing ever felt right. I... That's horrible. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. It was good to get that all out there. I needed that. Well, I, I've i bored you long enough. I'm sure you've got things to do. It wasn't boring at all. But I should get going. See what Henry wanted... Of course. The article should be up in the next week or so. It was nice talking to you again, Christine. You've been very helpful. Hello? Hey, everything good? Christ, why weren't you answering your phone? I was meeting up with... with... Laura, yeah. That's the problem. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. You're fine, right? Yeah? Why wouldn't I be? Look, we just watched the tape. Caroline was talking about Laura. Something's up with her. Well, yeah. Obviously something's up with her. What? Why do you think I kept agreeing to meet with her? The first time we talked... I noticed she only started her tape recorder AFTER asking me the interview questions. She's good. I almost didn't notice. She did it today, too. Then she gets all casual, asks me about personal stuff. Says one thing, goes back on it later- Wait, what kinds of personal stuff? Turn on speaker. I will, hold on, shut up. Christine, what kinds of personal stuff do you talk about? She grew up in Toll Price. She likes writing. You know what I mean. Okay, fine. Jesus. Here. <sighs> she asks me about you guys. Jesus Christ. Relax. Do you really think I'm going to tell her anything important? Anything could be important. We don't know what the hell she wants. Which is why I'm lying to her. Oh? Yes. Just because I'm not working on a fancy degree or can't bring a person to life doesn't mean I'm an idiot, guys told her that you two could be at each other's throats at a moment's notice, and that none of us are really close with anyone else. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I know it is. But wait, so you knew that she's probably out to get us, and you still met with her alone and didn't mention anything about it to us? I'm a big girl, Victor. I can take care of myself. I know the risks, and I'll handle it. 
We don't know her. She could kill you. She could try. Look, give me 10, 15 minutes. I'm coming over. You guys at Victor's? Yeah. I'll be right there. We'll talk about it more. Oh, and Victor, your mom was from Switzerland, right? Yeah, why? I have some information you might be interested in. 